Hello, I'm Karina Kelly. Dingoes have held a controversial place in Australian folklore. Despite their similarity to the family pet, they're dangerous predators capable of killing people. Yet many of us go out of our way to see them in the wild. Ironically, this curiosity could threaten the dingo with extinction. Jonica Newby reports on the delicate balance between tourist safety and the preservation of a species. And we must warn you, this story contains distressing scenes. The Australian dingo. To some, it's a yellow-hearted savage. To others, it's an icon of the Australian outback. But whatever we think of the dingo, will we regret its passing once it's gone? It's one of those situations I hoped I'd never be in, where, where actually it's possible for the extermination of a species in my lifetime. Dingoes are going the way of the thylacine, unfortunately. Unless somebody does something about it soon, we won't have any dingoes left. Unbelievable as it seems, we're once more on the verge of losing an icon before we realise it's in trouble. Aren't they gorgeous? Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> it was 10 years ago that geneticist Alan Wilton first got involved with dingoes. You should have seen him three weeks ago. Really? He's tinier and fluffier. Like most of us, back then he assumed dingoes were thriving. Alan was trying to develop a dingo DNA test so sanctuaries like this one could ensure their puppies were pure, not hybrids. The dingo is an ancient type of dog. It will readily breed with uh, domestic dogs. The problem is it's difficult to tell uh, a hybrid from a pure animal in the wild. So Alan began collecting wild dingo DNA samples from the far north right down to Victoria. By 2000, the test was at last working, and that's when he discovered the awful truth. Most dingo populations were 80% hybrids. Some were 100%. And the, the situation has steadily gotten worse over the last uh, 20, 30 years and, uh, and will just continue to get worse because like a rolling ball, ball rolling down the hill, once it's started, you, you can't stop it. The inescapable conclusion Within a hundred years, the pure dingo will be extinct in the wild. So is there anywhere wild dingoes may yet survive, a place away from dogs? Well, there's only one. It's home to an isolated population rumoured to be pure, Queensland's Fraser Island. Well, the Fraser dingoes are pretty shy, but I'm told they're most active around dusk and at night. So we've set up here at Yurong Beach, which is a known hotspot for dingo action. Hopefully we'll see one. I've come here with biologists Nick Baker and Daryl Jones to see what could one day be the last of the true dingoes. Well, I think, is that, that's one there. Yeah, I think that's it is. There. Yeah, that's one there. There's right there. What's it doing? Uh, it's probably sniffing around for dead fish. Dead fish? Yeah. They eat fish? They eat fish. Really? Oh. Do they actually catch fish themselves? Certainly in freshwater streams on the island. They catch fish. Well, um, you've seen that? I've actually seen that, yeah. Definitely. Sadly, that glimpse is all we get. These dingoes weren't always as wary of humans. In fact, they were originally brought to Fraser by Aborigines. Dingo, he come part and parcel with land. He was here. Joe Gala is a descendant of Fraser Island's Butchula tribe. It's just like you having a domestic dog for your pet or a cat. Well, like I say, Kevin Costner can dance with wolf. We dance with dingo <laughs> over Gary one time. When Europeans forced the butchler off Fraser last century, their dingoes remained behind. But the Europeans also brought domestic dogs to the island. 
could the dingoes really have remained pure? It seemed highly unlikely. But just last year, Alan's DNA test yielded a delightful surprise. From our DNA tests, uh, we're convinced that the dingoes on Fraser Island are pure dingoes, uh, which is great news. We actually have, miraculously, this astonishingly purebred group of dingoes, which are the only remnant left of what the purebred dingo was, was like. But Fraser Island was also becoming a haven for a very different beast. Tourists, 400,000 of them every year. It's the sort of situation that seems crazy to wildlife managers that, that you can have so many people in close proximity to a wild predator. It's inevitable that you will have interactions with those animals because people want to get close to them. People want to have a dingo experience. The nine-year-old was mauled by two dingoes and sadly... No In 2001, it. it happened. A young boy was killed. <laughs> Premier Beattie gave the controversial order. Any dingo venturing amongst humans would be culled. The latest numbers are probably about 40 or more were probably killed. So is the dingo population left behind still viable? Amazingly, no one knows. No one even knew how many Fraser dingoes there were. But the terrible events of 2001 were a turning point. It was realised a lot more research was needed. Mm. Oh! <laughs> what is that? That is basically rotted down anal glands from wolves and coyotes. Um, and OK, it's, uh, I think I'll go upwind. <laughs> it goes... As you can smell, it, it travels a long way. So I just wipe a bit of that onto that then they'll smell that from ages away and um, come in and roll all over it and leave me some hair. Hair yields DNA and provides the first solid estimates of how many dingoes are actually here. It's something I'm still working on actually but certainly around about the 120 is what the permanent population is. That means the cull took out a full quarter of this precious pure population. In conservation biology, we talk about viable populations, and that's a pretty low number for a viable population, especially one that's got so many threats. Even so, they're convinced their research will show saving the dingo is still possible. Hi, guys, how are you? Meanwhile, their Hi, colleagues at Queensland today? Parks and Wildlife have to protect the people as well as the dingoes. Their offences, policies to wean dingoes off humans, and four full-time rangers trying to convince tourists not to feed these wild predators. But with the tide of visitors rising by 10% a year, when it comes to a choice between dingoes and people, will we choose the dingo? It's 100% certain that there will be another serious incident one day. My greatest fear is that an official reaction of some sort that just won't be in the best interest of the population. Do you think the population could survive another big cull? Another big cull of the scale that we've already just had, this population would be seriously undermined. Already we're getting a sense of the possible future, having seen just one lone dingo in our two days here. Well, I've just found out why we haven't been seeing the dingoes around Yurong that I expected. Apparently there were a couple of juveniles here who were hanging around, but they'd been fed by the tourists and they were causing problems. And just a few days before we got here, they were culled. 
in a sense, it's, if you really wanted to put it in its stark terms, it's the difference between the, the extinction of a species and places for humans to play. You know, it's that, that trivial and that profound. It would be tragic if in the enlightened times that we live in now that that actually occurred in our lifetimes. Shh.